It's beer o'clock on Real Ale Craft Beer. Today we've got a beer from Wild Horse Brewing Company based in North Wales and it's a bottle of their New England IPA called Wild Horse. It's part of their 10 barrel series. I'm looking forward to getting this out into a glass and see what we get. The beer was kindly sent to us by this episode's channel sponsor imperialbeerclub.com Imperial beerclub.com have an online website now where you can order whatever beer you want or you can use their monthly beer club where you pay a monthly fee of 42 pounds and you get 10 beers imperial strength beers in exchange for your money so essentially every month you don't know what's coming it's a bit exciting it's like christmas every month uh, 10 imperial strength beers through the door for £42 a month. Or, as I mentioned, you could just go on their website and just browse their website and order beers to your own kind of consent and wish if you want. It's always to your consent. What am I talking about? Link for Imperial Beer Club is in the, the description box of this video. Beer in the glass. So, for a hazy New England IPA, it looks okay. It looks okay. I have seen cloudier, more kind of dense, hazy New England IPAs in my time. I've also seen them lighter. Uh, they, they, I'm not going to say generally because uh, there's no set way, there's no set colour for a New England IPA. But I have seen them a lot lighter than this and, and a little bit hazier. But yeah, nice one finger white head, hazy amber coloured ale, nice bit of carbonation. Let's get the aroma. 7% ABV. And what you want from a New England IPA, first and foremost, is a big waft of aroma. And you're getting a nice aroma from this. It's citrusy and grapefruity mango fleshy blood orange smells okay let's dive in cheers One more taste. It's very good. It's very promising. It's a little bit like when you were a kid and you're swinging on the monkey bars. Remember the monkey bars when you were a kid? You'd be swinging along and you're thinking, yes, I've got there, and there's one more to go, and you let go, and you miss, and you drop to the floor. It's so close to being a fabulous, fabulous beer. But it just drops out in certain areas. It just, it's just not quite there. It's just not... See, your Cloud Waters, your Vedanza, hitting the ceiling. This is storming away and it's just it's just not getting to where it wants to be. Let me explain why. There's the and I got it in the aroma. There's the slightest and I mean slightest but my nose I'm like I'm like one of those hunting dogs that can smell stuff from millions of miles away. I could just smell on the aroma just the faintest touches of diacetyl. It was so frustrating because it's a slight touch 
but immediately my palate, my brain goes, uh-oh, diacetyl. It's, it's probably the least amount of diacetyl I've ever had in a beer, but I still picked it up. And it just, it just affected how, it just put a little bit of caution into when I wanted to taste the beer. And that's why I went for the second taste before making a firm decision. To be fair, there's no diacetyl in the taste. It's just the slightest, slightest diacetyl aroma that's there. There's, there's, there's mango and citrus and grapefruit and, and a bit of pine. But it's it's juicy, but it's not it's not melting your mouth juicy. It it's not quite. So I talked about the colour earlier on not being quite not right not right. Well, quite quite right. I suppose I could get away with. Normally, New England IPA is a little bit lighter than this. It's not, it's not quite kind of cloudy enough either. It's not quite there in the cloudiness. It looks a bit murky. It looks a bit dull. It, it didn't quite, again, it's just not hitting that height. It's just not getting there. Uh, the aroma, as I mentioned, just the slimmest touches of diacetyl. Other than that, grapefruit and citrus. And then... I don't think they've got far to go. I don't think that it's not a million miles away from being a fantastic beer. It's not juicy enough. It's not, there's plenty of hops going on. Orange peel, fleshy blood orange, little bit of bitterness on the back end, but it's just not quite there. It's not quite there. Our 10 barrel series is a one-off range of beers inspired by anything and everything. We want it once on our 10 barrel system and when it's gone, it's gone. To learn more about this brew, visit our website. Okay, so this beer is never going to be brewed again. It's very promising, a very promising beer, but it's not quite there. I feel like this brewery should really perhaps go back and have another attempt at this because I think, I think they're very close to, to actually getting it wonderfully right and hitting the nail on the head. Um, but of course, 10 barrel brewing, it's an experimental process, it's small batch, you can play around, I get the idea, I get why they do it. Rating, and it's, ah, I think it says Yaki, Yaki Da on the side of the bottle. That means cheers in Wales. In Welsh, that means cheers. Um, being a Welshman myself, Rating, it's a tough one this, it's a tough one, but I'm gonna give it a seven. It's a seven out of 10 from Real Craft Beer. Nice, but a bit too nice. It's a bit, it's a bit too nice for its own good. It needs to be a little bit more kind of juicy and lovely. Seven out of 10, please put your comments in the comments box, subscribe to our daily beer reviews, give us a big fat thumbs up. Boom, and cheers.